Greetings friends, in the matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm very thankful to announce that uh, my first book, Restoring Christian Modesty, God's Perfect Will for Your Outward Appearance, is now available. By God's grace, I put links in the description below to Amazon for both paperback and Kindle versions. Paperback is priced at $9.95 and the Kindle version is priced at $6.95. Here's a brief history of how this book came about. Since 2005, I've been making gospel materials to distribute with the help of other brothers, beginning with MP3 files on CD. Then in 2012, I started researching and tinkering with video editing. Then around March 2014, I published my first Vimeo video about water baptism by scripture alone. Seven months later, I moved to YouTube and devoted most of my free time to script writing, filming, and editing. Now, in March 2019, five years after joining Vimeo, my YouTube page has over 7,000 subscribers and over 600,000 views. This is a small channel to most, but this has been a big encouragement to me. Now I'd like to begin a chapter-by-chapter -chapter overview of the book. We'll do two chapters on this video, perhaps three on the next, and then two on the next, by the grace of the Lord. Here are the headlines for chapter one. I'll read the entire list, but then I'll choose a few of the most beneficial lessons from this chapter that I'd like to share with you. The Word of God is our foundation, the rightly divided Word of Truth, the predicted falling away, what is holiness, God requires holiness, how we become holy, holiness is beautiful, love is the greatest motivator, legalism, Modesty, the beginning and ending of modest clothing. Today is like the days of Noah, the root of immodesty. Outward nakedness signals spiritual nakedness, the dangers of immodesty, my experience with immodesty. First, I think what is holiness will be important. We have to understand that holiness is consecration, purification, and sanctification of heart and life. In fact, God calls us to perfect holiness in reverential fear or respect to Almighty God. It's also crucial to know that Scripture literally states our purpose is that we should be holy and without blame before Him. The headline, Love is the Greatest Motivator, is extremely important because it shows the order that we must obey God. We start with love for God, which produces faith, and then faith produces works. Jesus Christ plainly taught that love is the greatest motivation for obedience. It was Jesus' love for the Father that allowed him to keep all the commandments of God. The legalism section is very important. You'll benefit from understanding that legalism is something that's added to the Word of God. So Jesus fulfilled every word of God. That did not make him a legalist. It made him a loyalist. The same applies to you and I. If we keep all the word of God, that doesn't mean we're legalists. It means we're loyal to obedience to every word of God. The modesty headline defines modesty by the Bible because it's a Bible command. The beginning and ending of modest clothing is an important section because God initiated modest clothing in Genesis 3 verse 21 and it has remained unchanged through the entire Bible. The last mention of modest clothing is in Revelation 7 where we see Jesus and all the Holy Ghost filled Christians dressed in modest robes that go down to their feet. We'll spend all eternity in modest clothes. The root of immodesty is the influence of demons or evil spirits. Evil spirits cause people to take off their clothes and display their flesh in an immodest public way. The book will also teach that if someone displays their nakedness in public, it shows they have a spiritual nakedness as well. This means the person does not possess the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There's two dangers of immodesty. One is causing people to stumble into sin, which also means we're sinning against Christ. The other is someone becomes captive to the will of evil spirits, or they're addicted to demonic powers. The last headline is about my experience with immodesty. In second grade, I was exposed to immodestly dressed women on MTV, and it started an addiction to lust that lasted up into my college years. But God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, through the blood of Jesus Christ, has cleansed me completely from that 
and I've never gone back. Chapter 2 headlines include Rightly Dividing Old Testament Scripture Nine Categories for Placing Old Testament Scripture The New Testament Sabbath Two or Three Bible Witnesses We Are Not Under the Law Blanket Statements Abominations and magnifying the law to fulfill the law. In chapter 2 I show nine categories that Old Testament scripture can be rightly divided into. This is extremely helpful for everyone to understand that Old Testament scripture can be used to guide our lives in the New Testament. There's an important chart in chapter 2 that shows all Ten Commandments are still in effect in the New Testament. The two or three witnesses section is important because it shows God will give two or three scriptural witnesses for the principles or commands that remain in effect for New Testament believers. We are not under the law shows that we are not under the curse of the law, but rather we're saved by grace. But grace does put us under the law of the Holy Spirit according to the Bible. The law of the Holy Spirit will never guide us into sin, but rather into obedience and the fulfillment of God's righteous word. The abominations section is crucial. Most of the Old Testament abominations remain abominable in the New Testament. And there's a very detailed list of these such as homosexuality, idolatry, murder, witchcraft, and other abominations. In closing, uh, thank you for your support with this book. I trust it will be a blessing to your heart. I trust it will teach you a lot more about the Lord and then be a witnessing tool you can use to share with others. Uh, that Christ might be glorified. Please contact me with any questions or concerns. God bless you, and may Jesus Christ be the desire of your heart.